So we're going to learn from uh, Kedushat Levi Yitzchak, the teachings of Levi Yitzchak from Bardichov, Drushei Pesach, the teachings of Pesach. Uh, in my version, we're in page 187, Kuf Pei Zayn. I know we are all holding different versions. We're going to start the little quote where it says, Yom Tov Shel Pesach, the festival of Pesach. Now we know that we have three festivals, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. We have other holidays, but these are called the Mo'adim, the festivals. Yom, Shal, Yom Tov Shel Pesach, have you found it? Yom Tov Shel Pesach, Hu Neged Avraham Kayadua. We have three festivals and we also have three forefathers, Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Each one of the festivals is corresponding to one of the forefathers, which we know that Pesach corresponds to Avraham Avinu, Kayadua. How do we know that? When the angels came to Avraham Avinu to tell him to, that he's going to have a child, one angel came to destroy Sodom, one angel came to heal Avraham Avinu, and the other angel came to notify him that he's going to have a child. Specifically, it was the angel of Raphael who came to heal him, he just circumcised himself. The angel of Gabriel came to destroy Sodom, and the angel of Michael came to, to tell him, you're going to have a son a year from now. And the story says that he ran out of the tent, he told Sarah, go and uh, uh, make matzot. And uh, that was exactly at Pesach when those angels came. And uh, sure enough, the year later, uh, Yitzchak was born on Pesach. So, so we know that the holiday of Pesach, the festival of Pesach corresponds to Abraham Avinu. Veshavuot neged Yitzchak. Shavuot corresponds to Yitzchak. Why Yitzchak? Yitzchak was uh, placed on the altar and then of course the, the angel told Avraham Avinu not to proceed and Avraham Avinu looked around and what do you know? A ram stuck in his horns in the bush. Avraham Avinu apparently was a very strong man, just grabbed the ram like that. I don't know how he did such a thing. I don't know if you ever saw a ram try to grab the ram. We'll see how successful you'll be. Yeah, even though it was a little ram, nevertheless, Abraham Avinu was not a young guy, by the way. He was a pretty, pretty uh, older guy at the time, grabbing a ram, and he slaughters the ram instead. And he took the, ra the, uh, the horn of the ram and made a shofar out of it. One shofar, one horn was used in Matan Torah, as they said that they heard the voices of the shofarot. And the other uh, horn is going to be the shofar that very soon Eliyahu Navi is going to blow. And that day when Mashiach comes, it's going to be blow, used a big shofar. Uh, there is a machloket if Eliyahu Navi is going to blow the shofar or maybe somebody else. Nevertheless, I don't care who blows it as long as it's being, going to be blown. But this is the horn of the isle, the ram that Avraham Avinu took at the time of the Akedah. And therefore, since Yitzchak came, uh, instead of Yitzchak came the ram, so the Shavuot, the festival of Shavuot, corresponds to Yitzchak going by the, the, the horns of the shofarot of the ram. Uh, here he doesn't say that, but uh, uh, Yaakov corresponds to Sukkot, because when Yaakov came out of Haran, then unfortunately, I don't know why, he obviously had a good reason, but for a year and a half, he didn't still, he went out of Haran, but he was schmoozing on the road for a year and a half, till he came to, back to his parents' home. And at the time, he made Sukkot, he made these little huts to his uh, uh, flocks, for the sheep, for the, for the cattle, and they, uh, they called it Sukkot. So the festival of Sukkot corresponds to Yaakov. Now, Going back now to Shavuot, to Yitzchak. It says, V'Shavuot neged Yitzchak, ayen sham. Shavuot corresponds to Yitzchak. Look over there, he sends you to a reference. Haremez, we have a hint here. At the time of Matan Torah, it says, Anochi. It says, Anochi ava elokecha. And what does it say? Anochi velo yelecha. Two commandments. The first and the second commandments we heard them, Mipia Gvura Shamano. We actually heard them directly from Hashem. That's why everybody was like, whoa, 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 Moshe, 
you go, you deal with this, we're going to step back. But nevertheless, Anochi Yavai Elokecha, Sherotzetich HaMeretz Mitzrayim, and also, Velo Yelecha Elokim Acherim Al Panai, these two commandments were actually heard directly from Hashem, Mipi HaGvura. And Gvura, Zehu Midat Yitzchak, the Mida of Yitzchak is coming from Gvura. And, like I said before, Vesukot Neged Yaakov, Yaakov, corresponds to Sukkot, Al Shem HaRemez VeYaakov Nasa Sukkota, there's a hint in the parasha, that it says in Yaakov, traveled to a place called Sukkota. <coughs> now, we have another festival, and this festival is called Rosh Chodesh. Fest, uh, believe it or not, Rosh Chodesh is called a Moed Katan, a small festival. And uh, Rosh Chodesh corresponds to David HaMelech. There are also explanations of Rosh Chodesh. The ladies received that because at the time of the golden calf, the ladies didn't want to participate in the sin. And you, originally, the celebration of Rosh Chodesh was supposed to be given to the tribes. Each tribe corresponding to one month. Since everybody did have a part in the golden calf, not the women, though the women got the, the merit of Rosh Chodesh. But nevertheless, the festival itself, the minor festival of Rosh Chodesh, corresponds to David. I'm sure you notice that when we pray Shmona Esra three times a day, we say, Eloke Abraham, Eloke Yitzchak, and Eloke Yaakov. How come we're not saying Eloke David? There is a Gemara that's talking about it, that David HaMelech told Hashem, well, why am I not in the Shmona Esra? It says, Eloke Abraham, Eloke Yitzchak, and Eloke Yaakov. Should it also, also say Eloke David? I'm the fourth the leg of the chariot. So Hashem told David the Melech, you are not uh, mentioned in Shmona Yisrael because Avraham, Yitzhak and Yaakov I have tested and you I didn't test. And of course, David the Melech says, okay, so test me too. So Hashem says, listen, David, <laughs> it's not a good day today. Don't ask for a test. David the Melech says, no, 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 I want you to test me too. I want to be in Shmona Yisrael. Hashem says, David, David, listen, you don't want me to test you? No, 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 I want you to test, no, David, he says, I want you to test me. Okay, you want, no problem, I'll give you a test. And then he sent him Eliyeh Batsheva, and the rest is known to everybody. But nevertheless, when we pray Shmon Eisre, we only say, Eloke Avraham, Eloke Yitzchak, Eloke Yaakov. But in Rosh Chodesh, we pray a tefillah that is called Musaf. And in Musaf, we add there, a verse, a part that it says, Uveshirei David Avdecha. And this is in the Musaf of Rosh Chodesh. Why? Because Rosh Chodesh, there is a connection to David the Melech. Therefore, we have to mention him in the, the Musaf of Rosh Chodesh. And here we have a hint in the Gemara. Zil le'ayin tav ve'kad shaliyarcha. When it's talking about the, 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 in, in the Gemara, about how they used to sanctify the month, they used to send uh, uh, witness, send people, and people who had to be a witness to testify that they saw the moon. And when two witnesses, kosher witnesses, came and testified that they saw the moon, they would sanctify the moon, the, the month. V'shalach le simana David Amelech, David Israel, David Melech Israel, chay v'kayam. What is the sign that Hashem sent? He sent us. David the Melech was Melech Israel, and he is Chai Vekayam. <clears throat> now we're going to continue doing another portion. It's a little bit on a different topic, but nevertheless, just to quickly just to uh, to to uh, recap what we learned that we have three festivals. Each festival corresponds to one of the forefathers, uh, Rosh Chodesh. That is a Moed Katan. It's a small festival. Corresponds to David the Melech. These are the four shepherds that are the four sides, the four legs of the chariot. And needless to say that when I celebrate one of the, the, the festivals, I have to understand that the, what's the root of the, of the holiday. And the root of the holiday of, Abraham, of uh, Pesach is Avraham Avinu, is Chesed. It's a holiday with a lot of Chesed. What does that got to do with me? Because in a holiday, in a festival, there's a higher revelation of the, what's called Giluya Etzem, the revelation of the essence. 
Meaning on this week of Pesach, specifically on the night of El Seder, there's a very high revelation of the essence of Midat HaChesed. Which needless to say, when I align myself with the He'ara, with the shine, that it empowers in me my Midat HaChesed. So I should grow, grow and become much more charitable, much more kind, much more forgiven and so forth. So I have to have in mind what's going on the time of Pesach. Now, on Pesach, we continue. Be Pesach hayu mevin minchat seorinu v'shvod minchat chitim. On Pesach, they used to bring a certain korban, but it wasn't an animal. It was an offering of uh, of seorin, of uh, of uh, no seor is like uh, not barley, uh, uh, barley. Yeah, barley. But on Shavuot, they used to bring a sacrifice, a mincha. That is called chitim. Chitim is wheat. So on Pesach they used to bring a sacrifice, a mincha, made out of barley. And Shavuot they used to bring a mincha, an offering made out of wheat. The haklalhu, there is a rule here. Sheyesh shnei minei hasagot, shanu masigim et abore baruchu. Anything that is done in the Torah in a physical way, there's a mystical and Kabbalistic explanation that the same way that there are two types of offering, there are two types of ways how one can grasp the greatness of the Kadosh Bukho. This is called Hasaga. Hasaga is when I actually grasp something. I understand it in a way that is more than, my, the, more than just uh, uh, thinking of it or using my intellect for that. Hayechad, the first one, Shemasigit Aborei Lidei Nisim Veniflot, Shasaimano. The first way that we can some, tie, some way relate to Hashem is by the miracles that He does for us. Now you can look at miracles in the past and say, wow, look what Hashem did. And you can look at miracles that are happening in the present. And all day long, I mean, our life is a miracle. Just the fact that you're breathing now is a miracle. It all depends how, how to what level you're going. But I think every moment is a miracle. That just the fact that i breathing without even noticing. I, I, nobody ever sits in, at home and focuses on their breathing. Unless you're doing some type of a meditation or some breathing exercise, you don't, breathe, you don't meditate on your breathing. And just, yeah. And just imagine, you know, every two or three seconds you're taking a breath. I mean, you're not necessarily taking a deep breath, but you are. This is a miracle. And most people don't even uh, acknowledge how every second of our life is a miracle. But nevertheless, there are two ways to grasp the greatness of Hashem, one of them is through the miracle that He does for us, does, did, and will do. Miracles that He did and miracles that He's still doing. Not only that, He gives us life. I mean, the fact that I'm alive right now, that's a miracle. Because any given moment, you know how many people, they just in the middle of their life, the plug is being pulled out and on the spot, they fall on the ground. Can be a heart attack, can be a, a, a car accident, whatever it is. But in a split second, the person just just dies. Obviously, there's a physical uh, uh, act, but the fact is that the plug was pulled out from the top and shh, the body falls. Shem gives us life at every given moment. Not only life, he gives us peace and blessing. Shalom ve'bracha. shalem gemul l'chol nafsheno. Not only that, Hashem also prays a reward. I don't know if reward would be the right word. Gmul is uh, the, I mean, because this can be also a negative thing. Meshalem gmul. He pays what you want, one deserves to even through the ones who are the enemies of our soul. That can be our physical enemies that are trying to kill us day and night. And they also the spiritual enemies that are trying to get us off the Torah. But the Kadosh Baruch Hu, it says, Meshalem Gemul. He pays, he doesn't uh, owe anybody anything. Gemul is what I owe you. And if you did something negative, oh, I'll owe you a slap in the face. So Kadosh Baruch Hu also pays our enemies. You have nothing to worry about. That's why you shouldn't be upset or angry at our enemies. Let Hashem deal with it. Hashem is Milchama. He's going to deal with it. <clears throat> now the other way how we grasp Hashem, Shemasigit Taboreh Basechel Shu Mechudash. By, I can grasp Hashem by my intellect, by my sechel, but it has to be renewed constantly. Because if I don't renew my intellect, I will never have a new grasp of the Kadosh Bucho. What does it really mean? 
והבורא הוא המחדש ונותן שפע וברכה. When I understand that Hashem is the power that renews everything, He's the one that gives the blessing, that's when I can understand it in my mind that Hashem is the one who, who controls everything. Look now, we just had now three, four months of a winter. Oh Hashem, we don't have harsh winters. I was now in New York, that's a winter. Here we have a few cold days. But nevertheless, it's still winter. And now, the last week, the sun is out. Look at all the flowers coming. You see how beautiful flowers are, all the flowers outside. Wait another week, this whole thing is going to be green. And, and, and full of flowers and colors. You see, the Kadosh Baruch renews things. There's one tree here on the outside on Shabbat after Kiddush. And we were looking at it. And uh, Dale was saying to his wife, you think this tree is, gonna, is dead? And his wife is very knowledgeable in agriculture. And she looked at it and she was like, no, it's not dead. It's going to come alive. How do you know? Yeah, you see these little buds, little, little two millimeter buds. And she was like, here, I see life here. It's going to rejuvenate itself. It's going to renew itself. And you'll have here a beautiful tree within a few weeks. Who's bringing this bracha? This blessing. Blessing is not necessary that I tell you bless you because you sneezed. Or I tell you you should be happy or you should be rich or you should find your other half. Bracha, the translation of blessing is bracha. And bracha comes from the word in Hebrew havracha. Havracha is when you take something from above and you bend it down. This is uh, what they, sometimes they used to do with trees. And they used to take a branch of a tree, bend it into the ground, cover it with sand, and that branch will grow as another tree. This is called Havracha. <clears throat> in Masechet Kilaim, in the Mishnah, it's talking about it. What you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do, because you might mix it with another type. Nevertheless, the word Bracha comes from the word in Hebrew, Havracha. To bring something, to pull something from a very high place into a very low place. This is Bracha, this is a blessing. That Hashem is taking a certain energy, we call it Shefa. Shefa is an abundance. And it brings it into the world. And then it will manifest in a descending chain into the world that will change from a spiritual blessing into a physical blessing. This is the word Bracha. Now when I see with my intellect how Hashem is the one who renews everything, how is He renewing it? He's bringing a Bracha into the world. This is called Shefa and Bracha. Shefa is an abundance and Bracha is the blessing. והנה כשמשיג את הבורא על ידי ניסים ונפלאות, הוא משיג בשיעורים. When you grasp Hashem when, with miracles, and not only miracles with wonders, it's uh, considered that it's uh, in, a, in some time type of a portion or a measurement. שיעור is not, uh, I mean, שיעור in Hebrew is a class, but שיעור is also a measurement. It can be a small measurement, big measurement, and so forth. When I'm looking at a miracle, I can say, okay, Yetziat Mitzrayim is a huge miracle, and the fact that, I don't know, the tree here now is uh, growing uh, uh, oranges, that's a small miracle. You know, that's because uh, I don't see it as a big miracle. I mean, one can argue on what I'm saying right now. I'm just trying to make it a point that there are huge miracles and little miracles. Every day, women having babies, that's a huge miracle. But sometimes you see a woman that is chas v'shalom, there's a lot of complications and uh, physically can uh, be life-threatening and then she somehow goes out of the life-threatening situation everybody's like, wow, what a miracle! So here the giving of the baby was a greater miracle than another woman who gave baby, a baby, life to a baby in a healthy way. So a miracle can be measured, so to say, in, you know, we'll call it a big miracle and a small miracle. In Hebrew it's called shi'ur. Shi'ur is a measurement. And in plural way, because when we're saying miracles and wonders, we say shi'urim. It's plural. Where do we find this word shi'urim? Just pronounced a little bit different. In Shir and Eshet Chayl, Venuda Bisha'arim Ba'ala. That she knew in the measurement, so to say, of her husband. What does it really mean? Al Yadei Shi'ur Vezeh Bepesach. How does the Eshet Chayl, I mean, this is a very deep meaning. Uh, one day, Bezat Hashem, we will start learning some interpretations of Eshet Chayl, because Eshet Chayl is a very, very deep concept. A lot of people attribute it to Shlomo HaMelech. Really, Eshet Chayl, Avram Avinu wrote it. 
Eshet Chayil is the eulogy that Avraham Avinu wrote to Sarah. And later on, Shlomo Melech came down and wrote it down. But really, that's uh, attributed to Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu was a very big Mekubal. Don't forget Avraham Avinu compiled the book of, Yitz book of Formation, Sefer Yetzirah. Avraham Avinu got all the information right over here from the corner, from Shem and Ever. Shem got the information from Noach, who got the information from Shet, who got the information from Adam. And Shem came out of the ark, believe it or not, came here to Tzfat. And he learned here, and he had a yeshiva here. Avraham Avinu came here for many years, then he went back to Ur Kasdim. Avraham Avinu uh, kind of ran away from Ur Kasdim for a while because he was wanted. There was a price on the head. Nimrod was looking for him, and he ran away. And he somehow found him well, his way here to Shem and Evel, and Shem taught him everything. Later on, Yitzchak came here, Yaakov came here, Rivka came here, everybody came here. Then we came here. So, yeah. <laughs> so Baruch Hashem, Avram Avinu was a very big Mekubal. So when he compiled Eshet Chayl, this is not a poem with hints or with uh, riddles. Uh, that's how you call it, not hints, riddles. But there is a very deep meaning behind Eshet Chayl. Nevertheless, we find a verse in Eshet Chayl, Venoda Basha'arim Ba'ala. This is re uh, referring to many other things, but here it's referring to our topic, Bashi'orim, in this uh, measurement. Al Yadei Shi'ur, by using a measurement, what is this measurement that we're talking about? Ze Bepesach. This we can find in the sacrifice, in the offering, I wouldn't say sacrifice, rather an offering, of Pesach. Therefore, al ken mavim minchat seorim. Why do we bring the mincha, the offering of seor, in Pesach? Because seor is the same letters of shiur. Exact same letters, just this is a shin and this is a sin. Sin is seor, seorin, wheat, eh, barley, and shiur is a measurement. When you are grasping Hashem with your intellect, with your mind, you're reaching to a level of comprehension and grasping that has no measurement. When it comes to a miracle, you say a big miracle, small miracle. When it comes to understand Hashem with your sechel, this is a great level, then you can measure it. How can you measure what you understand in your mind? We say a big brain. A big, uh, a big uh, knowledge, I, I understand the deep, there's no shiur here, I can uh, define the measurement here. Vezebe Shavuot, and in Shavuot, you understand the, 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 the Torah and Hashem in a different way. How do we understand uh, Hashem in Shavuot? By the 22 letters of the Torah. Belo shiur vemida without any measurement and without any size. Therefore, al ken mevim minchat chitim. Why do we bring chita, wheat, on, on uh, Shavuot? Because chita, chet, tet, hey, is gimatria 22. Numerical value of 22, corresponding to the 22 letters of the Torah. So there are two ways how I can grasp Hashem. What does it really mean, grasp Hashem? Besides that I wear a yarmulke and I have a nice beard and a black suit and I pray three times a day, that's very nice of me and many others. But do you really understand what Hashem means? I know many people that they don't have the black suit and the yarmulke and the beard and they understand Hashem more than me. Because their de the depth of looking into what it means Hashem is much more broad, much more broad and much more deep. I need to understand Hashem. It says, you have to know Hashem. To follow the mitzvot is very nice. That's a jumping board to understand a little bit in the greatness of Hashem. But why do we think we do all these mitzvot? We learned a few days ago in the same book, Dushat Levi Yitzchak, that all the mitzvot that I do is only to bring me to one place. Ahava v'irait Hashem. To love and fear Hashem. That's where this is much greater than fulfilling the mitzvot. So the mitzvot are the tool that brings me to know Hashem. I need to know Hashem. Why? Because when I know Hashem, I can fulfill the ultimate mitzvah. You should love Hashem. Then comes the next paragraph of Shema. This is the fear of Hashem. The first paragraph of Shema, we learned that a few days ago. This is the level of love. 
The second paragraph, Vayayim Shemot Ishmur Mitzvotai, that's fear. I need to reach to that level. And there are two ways how I can grasp in my mind what does it mean, the Kadosh Baruch Hu. Because my physical brain will never understand what a God is. But I want to reach to a certain level that I do understand that there is this power in the universe that is controlled by God. The power of renewity, the power that we call Hit Chadshut. And where is it coming from? It's coming from Hashem. Everything that Hashem does is above this world. Hashem is the source of blessing. I need to get to a point like Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu knew the Kadosh Baruch Hu. There is a Hasidic story that uh, it's uh, told about the Balatanya that he was a very big tzaddik, genius in the Torah, and he went to learn from the Magid from Azrij in the same yeshiva of Levi Yitzchak from Berdichov, in the same yeshiva of Rabbi Elimelech, uh, 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 and uh, the Noam Elimelech, Elimelech from Nizhansk, and Rabbi Zusha from Anipoli, and all these great names that we hear in the Hasidic uh, dynasties. They all went to the same yeshiva who, who the teacher there was the Magid from Azrij, who he was the, the Talmud, the student of the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov used to travel around, and the Magid from Azrij was the complete opposite. He had the, uh, health issues and a very bad, bad uh, health. So he stayed in one place, and everybody went to him to learn from him. So even though there are different ages, but these names... That we, that we mention and that we learn from them. Now we're learning from Rabbi Yitzchak from Berdichov. He was sitting in the same bench next to Rabbi Elimelech from Lijansk. And Rabbi Zusha from Anipoli and the Baal Atanya, Rabbi Shnor Zalman from Liadi and all these, these great uh, sages. So, there's a story that uh, the Baal Atanya went, he, had a, he didn't know what to, if to go to Harvard or to go to Yale. He didn't know where to, to go to learn now. So he had an option of going to Vilna to learn from the Gon, and to go to Mazrij and learn from the Magid. He decided to go to Mazrij. When they asked him why, he said, because in Vilna they teach you how to learn Torah. I know how to learn Torah. And in Mazrij they teach you how to pray. I need to know how to pray. But nevertheless, when he came back, then, of course, they asked him, Nu, what did you learn? So he says, I learned there is a God. <laughs> what? You spent years in Mazrij to learn there's a God? You didn't know there's a God before that? He's like, no, I, now I really know that there's a God. And the person that was talking to him says, everybody knows there's a God. So he wanted to challenge him and he calls his maidservant and he tells her, Natasha, do you know, do you believe that there's a God? She's like, yeah, I believe there's a God. So he tells him, you see, even my maidservant believes there's a God. And the Baltan answer says, she believes, I know. So there's a very big difference by believing and knowing. I want to reach to a level that I know there's a Shem. This is V'yadata et Hashem Elokecha. And that can only be done when I really start, start digging into the depth of my mind, learning that there's a Kadosh Bacho. And like we mentioned, there are two ways of learning that. I, I, one is focusing and meditating on the miracles that Hashem did and does which will bring me to a great understanding of Hashem. Look now at a tree, how it grows. That's an unbelievable miracle. I like gardening. I like being spending time in the garden. I look sometimes at the flowers. I am believe this is an unbelievable miracle. Yesterday it was this big. I didn't even notice. Now it's this big. I didn't even notice how it changed. And sometimes you see, one day it doesn't get water. It withers. You put water. Grows up, it's just an unbelievable miracle. And anything, long time it dies. yeah. And if you don't, it dies exactly. You can see miracles in everything. I, uh, I try to see the miracles in me. How my nails are growing, my hair is growing, my face is changing. Unbelievable. Looking, I just looked yesterday uh, at, at a picture. My daughter took a picture of me and my wife, and I looked at the picture. And I was like telling my wife, not in a negative way, but look how we aging. Not in a not nice way. I mean, you have to be very careful to say that to your wife. <laughs> that might cause, uh, you know, homicide here. But, uh, so I tell my wife, listen, look how he aged. And not in a negative way, but just, and you, you look at the mirror every day, you don't see the changes. But you look at the distance between here and 10 years ago, this is a miracle. How something, what, I changed? What, I'm not the same one? Suddenly I look different? This is all miracle. You can look every day, every second, every moment of what's going on around you. That's miracles. That will bring you to, to reach to an understanding of Hashem. But 
This is in a limited way. It comes in a measurement. Like we said, a big miracle, small miracle. Or, you're looking at the power of Hashem that renews everything. That's already uh, above, above uh, uh, what's called Tam Vedat. You can measure it. And that's where you really learn the greatness of Hashem when uh, the, your Sechel goes deeper and deeper to, to, to see the greatness of Hashem. That's why, I mean, the, he brings this drush, this explanation, from the fact that on Pesach we offer a mincha, an offering made out of barley, and uh, because the barley is seor, seor is a measurement, meaning that on Pesach we can reach to a level, a certain level of understanding Hashem. But specifically on, uh, on uh, uh, Shavuot, that this is, the, you know, we're starting in Pesach, to start uh, climbing towards Shavuot. I mean, we're learning now on Pesach, but we have to understand that next week exactly on Friday, then we're starting the march towards Shavuot. We're opening a gate on Pesach night and to start walking towards Matan Torah. This is a high level of uh, godly understanding. It's not a shame. We have to understand that next Friday, or, uh, I mean, uh, the videos are recorded. Chas v'shalom, if Mashiach is not going to come and somebody is going to watch this video after Pesach, they're not going to stand next Friday. But the night of Pesach is a very auspicious time. Well, the reason why we're learning all this is to prepare that, you know, when you go on a vacation that you have been waiting for for a whole year, you, you're, you pack a week before, you learn all the keywords of the language of the destination, you prepare yourself because you've been waiting for this uh, vacation for so long. You have to understand that the next Friday, Pesach night, is 24 hours of a, a, a very, very unique opportunity to really jump to a much higher level. And in order for me to get that, I need to prepare myself the right way to understand what, what's going on that night. This is not just some night that I'm wearing a new suit and coming to a Pesach table and eating matzah. To meditate and be conscious of every moment, what's happening, not to lose that 24 hours. These 24 hours will affect me for the rest of the year. <coughs> and anything that I'm going to do on these 24 hours that has nothing to do with Pesach, I'm lo losing big time of this Shefa, this abundance and this Bracha I'm getting that night that it will carry with me for the rest of the year. And Bezad Hashem, that night, it brings me to a level of great understanding in Hashem. Most of us don't have a deep understanding in Hashem. We're doing the things, uh, what's called Bekabalat Ol. Accepting the yoke, but I want to do this with love. I want to do it with the, what I'm, the, the service to Hashem. I want to understand what I'm doing. I'm not expecting to be Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, but to understand the things behind it. That will allow me to serve Hashem with greater love, greater fear. Needless to say, climb to a much higher level. That uh, that's that's what we want. Bezad Hashem. So we should have uh, good preparation, and uh, wish you here a kosher and happy Pesach.